Hey everyone, it's Eugene and welcome. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is working in Cloud Compare, bringing in some scan data and then being able to translate, uh, rotate it, and then be able to assign a specific coordinate to a specific point. Now, this came at a request of a user who was using the Recon 3D app, that's the iPhone scanning app, to scan a car. But then what they wanted to do was bring it in and then have it positioned in a very specific way. And so normally when you're scanning with a terrestrial laser scanner, it could be photogrammetry or whatever, the vehicle or the object that you're scanning is not in its own sort of uh, perfectly aligned coordinate system unless you set it up that way to start with. So if you don't do that, then when you just, you know, sort of take the vehicle in this case into another program. It may be sitting on an angle or it may be twisted, may not be level. Uh, there's a number of things that could be happening there. And what you want to do is fix it. Okay. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing here. And I'll be running through this pretty quickly. Now I'm on uh, cloud compare version uh, 212 and this is the beta, but a lot of the same options will be available on older versions of cloud compare. It works pretty much the same way. Okay, so let's get started. What I'm going to do is just get a vehicle and just anything at all. So I'm going to drag in a model here. So this is a Peugeot small car here. And I'm just going to increase the point size to start with. Okay, so this is a, this is a scan that was done with Recon 3D. Okay, pretty simple scan. So I'm going to go here and go to the top down. So you can see that this is squared sort of uh, uh, laterally here in the view on my screen. But maybe what I want to do is I want to align the front axle with the X axis here. OK, so it's rotated 90 degrees from that position at the moment. So there's a couple of things that I do right off the bat. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an orthographic view. So if I click on this icon over here and I go to orthographic view, you'll see that the the screen changes. Okay. The way that the view is, if I click on the object or perspective mode and then go to orthographic, you see that there's a, a small shift. And that's because the roof of the vehicle, as it's closer to us, would appear larger than things which are farther away. But in, in an orthographic view, that's not what happens. Okay. Everything is sort of scaled to their uh, real world coordinates. So if I go to the perspective view, you'll see that things got uh, wider uh, at the closer to us. And then if I go to orthographic, everything snaps back. So I'm going to look at this from a side view and you'll see that there's something going on here. Okay. So this is on level. Now, surprisingly, the Recon 3D app actually does a really good job of determining which way is level or which way is up. And in fact, this was done on a hill. So the gravity or the position of which way was up is, is true. So this is correct. But maybe what I want to do is I want to level the car out now. So I want to rotate it so that it's more level. The roadway is more level. And I also want to rotate it so that the axle, the uh, front axle here is aligned with the X axis. So I got to make some changes. So let me go back to the top down view. Make sure that I'm in orthographic. Yes, I am. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the translate and uh, rotate tools. So if I click on this Peugeot 107, I'm going to have that selected. You have to have it selected in order for some of the icons to come up. If I click off of it, you'll see a lot of stuff goes gray and I don't want that. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to the translate rotate and you're presented with this menu up here. So what this is allowing me to do is move in all axes. Okay. So if I just left click right now, you'll see that here it says rotation is X, Y, and Z. So the left mouse button is going to be rotation. So I'm not changing the view right now. I'm actually changing the orientation of the vehicle here. Okay. Of this car, it's being rotated all over the place. So this is not what I want for sure. But the right mouse button will adjust the translations. And here it's got the X, the Y, and the Z. So they're all checked at the moment. So uh, they are moving in every direction. Okay. There's a pause button here. When I hit pause, you'll see that it says, you know, transformation paused, unpause to transform again. I'm now rotating the view, not the car. So now I'm rotating the view. So if I go to a top down now, this is the top down view. And you can see I completely messed this up because I've translated the vehicle into sort of a different uh, orientation. Now, I'm not going to keep any of this. I'm going to do this again. That was just for demonstration. So I'm going to X out of this, close that, and you'll see it pops back into the top down view. So let's start this again. Peugeot 107. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to go to the translate. 
And here I've got X, Y, and Z. So there's a drop down here. And if I go to just the Z, what I'm going to be doing is being able to rotate around the vertical axis. And I think that's what I'm going to do here. So by doing that, when I left click now, um, the model doesn't go crazy. It doesn't go wild in all different directions. So it just goes around the one axis, which is very, very helpful. So just by eye, I'm going to try and align this uh, vertically up and down. And this way, the front uh, axle or the wheels will be aligned in the X axis. Okay. And that's, this is sort of a, a, a quick and dirty way of doing that. Um, you'd have to probably do something a little bit different if you really wanted it super, super accurate. But usually people can do this uh, quite well, you know, down to like a degree or so, or even a fraction of degree just by eye on the screen here. So I like this. I'm going to accept that change. But what I need to do is I want to look at it from the side because I want to level the vehicle as well. So I'm going to go and pause this. I'm going to hit the space bar. It's the same as hitting this little icon up here. And now it's paused. And I'm going to look at this from the side now. Okay, so you'll see that um, this is, I probably have to rotate it because you can see the vehicle is not level. It's on a slant here. So I may want to make an adjustment there. And if I go this way, I also want to make an adjustment here. So let me start with this way. This would be a rotation in the Y, I believe. So I'm going to click on the Y and I'm going to make an adjustment like this. Actually, I'm paused now. So let me do that again. That was, let me go like that. And I'm going to unpause by hitting the space bar. And now let me rotate. You'll see I can only rotate this way. So that looks relatively square. That looks okay. So the vehicle body looks relatively level. Okay, that's one way. And I'm going to press pause again. And I'm going to go and switch to the um, X direction now. So if I go here, so the X direction, I'm going to unpause. Now I'm going to rotate this and you'll see that I can level the vehicle. Something like that. Okay, something like this. That looks more or less level. So once I've got this, the road looks fairly level. Um, I can hit the checkbox here and that means that I, I will accept all the changes. And down at the bottom, when I do that, you'll see that it has a number of uh, different numbers and such here. So that's all the orientations and transformations that uh, I've put in manually here by moving this thing around. So now when I look at this, if I go to a top down view, you'll see that it's oriented this way, which is what I wanted. So there's the X axis. It's aligned with the front axle. And if I go to the side, okay, it's like that way. Now, uh, the side is relative, like depending on which way you look at it, but you can see that it's more or less level here. I probably could have adjusted this a little bit more, but I think you get the idea of how you can move this uh, in three different axes, just like an airplane. You can uh, yaw, you can pitch, so the nose would go up and down and you can roll, so it would go like side to side. Okay, so with that done, and I've got all the rotations, maybe what I want to do now is I want to set, and I'm going to go back to perspective. I want to set, let's say this, the center of the rim here as the zero, zero, zero. So right here. Now, in order to do that, I'll have to use some transform tools. But to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see what this point at the moment is currently at in terms of the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So let me do that. So I've got this selected and I'm going to click on this uh, point picking. It gives you some information. So if I click on this and I just click on the center of the rim and I'm going to do the best I can here, you know, something like this. Okay. So I've got a point here. All right. So this is giving me a readout of this specific point. It's point number 75139 and it gives me the X, the Y, and the Z coordinates. Cool. So now that I know that, if I want to set this to zero, okay, actually, it's not exactly where I want it. Let me move this over a little bit. Maybe try this point. Uh, a little bit more. Let's see if it'll go over a little bit more. Okay, there, that one there maybe. I think I like this one here. So these are the coordinates. They're very similar to what I had before, but I want to translate this so that this point becomes the zero, zero, zero. So one of the things you can do with these labels is you can save them. So there's a button up here. It has the little save or the little floppy disk. If I click on that and before I click on it, just look over here in this database tree. And what it'll do is it's going to save this label over here. Okay. Underneath the scan. So I'm going to go ahead and go save and boom, there it is. Okay. I've got it right now. So I'm going to X out of this. But the label stays. It's still visible. And this is helpful for me when I want to make some transformations. So what I want to do is set this to be zero, zero, zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the scan and I'm going to go to edit 
and I'm going to go to apply transformation. That's control T is the shortcut. Now here you have the transformation matrix. And so you could do some things there, but there's an easier way. Just go to this tab that says axis angle. And you see, I can put in X, Y, and Z rotations. I can also do X, Y, and Z translations. So a quick and easy way to do this would be if I move this point, the inverse of each of these numbers. So right now the X dimension here is at negative 5.340. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move it the opposite. I'm going to move it to 5.340. Now I have three decimal places and I could probably go more, but that's, I think that's fine for now. This is in meters, so I'm only going to get to the closest uh, millimeter, which is absolutely fine. For the Y, I'm going to take the inverse, which is the negative 8.324. And then finally on the Z dimension, I have a negative value. So I'm just going to take the positive 1.567. So with these here, when I click OK, it's going to set this to 000. So watch this label and I'm going to go OK. All right, it just moved, so everything moved out of there. So I'm just going to hit the zoom button here and now I'm back. And you'll see that the label that specific point has now been set to zero, zero, zero. Now, some of these you'll see have a small negative number, and it could be that there's some uh, residual uh, numbers that are further down past, you know, three, four, five, six decimal places. Uh, but no big deal. I think this, this is good enough for the moment. But what you'll see here is that the object right now is centered to zero, zero, zero. So if I take a measurement, so for example, at the very bottom here, or let's say, for example, I just pick a point at the bottom. I can see that it's pretty much uh, at the X0, Y0. And I, if I go straight down, I should be relatively close. I'll have like a negative, oh, I don't know, what is that? that? That might be like 20 centimeters or something like that. So let me pick a point and let me pick a point just at the base of the tire. Okay, and you'll see that I've got like 0, 0 and about 25 centimeters. Okay, negative 2.252 meters. So that looks like it's correct. So those two things, the rotate, the translate, and then being able to pick a point and apply a transformation are an easy way that you can move your model around and set it to a specific coordinate. Quick video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.